ready to praise the Lord this morning. I'll give God a great hand of praise this morning. It's just good to be here this morning. Good morning, everyone. We want to thank you that's online and watching us this morning. We thank God for you this morning because we want to welcome all of you to New Direction. Because we are the church of the community, because we are the teaching, reaching, preaching, and helping others. If you are viewing with us for the first time, or if you are just searching for a place to worship, we are so excited, so excited to have you join us today. Our prayer is that you will be enlightened, encouraged, and energized by your experience. At this time, we would like to invite every one of you to become an electronic evangelist and share the service with your friends and your family members. At this time, we bring to you none other. Give the Lord a hand for new direction. Praise King. Jelly Red. 
the same is what my end will be. May the Lord bless the reading of the word of the Lord. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father God, we come to thank you this morning, Father. We thank you for waking us up this morning, oh Lord God. Father God, we just give you all the praise and the glory this morning, Lord God. Father God, right now in Jesus' name, we ask you for forgiveness, Lord God, for anything we have said this morning that's not a part of your plan. Father, we just ask that as you reach the feet of your blessing, Father God. Bless this congregation. Bless those shout hallelujah for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many know he's worthy to be praised? How many know he's worthy to be magnified? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, in Colossians, Paul explained that at one time we were without Christ. We were strangers. We were enemies of God with no hope and without God. But through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have been delivered from the power of darkness and put over into to, to the kingdom of Jesus Christ, purchasing our freedom and forgiving our sins. That's something to shout about. Hallelujah. The song says he broke the chains and we are no longer the same. Hallelujah.
broke the chains. I'm no longer the same. 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 I didn't know how I was walking around. 
I shouldn't have had no energy. I should have been laying in a bed somewhere. But I was still going to work. I was still doing everything that I needed to do. For six months, I was sitting in a room with cancer patients, getting iron transfusions, trying to build my iron back up, back up. So they finally said, your iron is high enough so you can have your surgery. I was walking around in pain for years, but you'd never be able to tell the goodness of God. The goodness of God. So I have my surgery three days after my birthday. And I was a little bit nervous. I'm not even going to sit here in front. I told Denitra, I said, if anything happened to me, please take care of my baby. I went in to have the surgery. And I said, I said a prayer. I said, Lord. Just get me through this. Just get me through this. I laid on that table and I lost so much blood. They couldn't, they couldn't, they was, they couldn't get me up. But when you have people who are praying, yes. Hallelujah. when you have people who will pray Hallelujah. on your behalf, yes. Bible says that when two touch and agree, it will yeah. 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 That surgery took longer than it was supposed to, but I'm here. Yeah. I'm standing here today. I'm here. I'm here. I celebrated my baby's ninth birthday yesterday because I was here.
start praising God. No wonder the Bible says, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. He has made us and not we ourselves. Come on, give the praise team a hand of praise this morning. Didn't you enjoy them this morning? I mean, they sung out of their hearts. Lifted the Lord up this morning and brought the presence of the Lord into the building this morning. How many of you feel the presence of God here? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're getting ready now for all to pray. And you that can stand with us, we want you to stand with us this morning because I heard Sister Mallory talking about what the Lord had done for her. And God is no shorter than his word. She talked about in the song, God is a promise keeper. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. I know him for all of that and more. You looking at a miracle right here. You looking at a miracle. In the year 14, he put me in the hospital. I needed two fancy blood. And I was walking around like nothing was going on. I know God can do a miracle. He's a miracle worker. And this morning, I want you to identify one person that you will pray for this morning. And on the count of three, I want you to place that person's name into the atmosphere. Because this morning, praise God, we know that Jesus is coming. And your prayer can make the difference in somebody being saved or being lost. I want you to call that person's name out this morning. On the count of three, one, two, and three. Call that name out this morning. Call it out this morning. Hallelujah. Now take your prayer request and reduce it down to one word. Now on the count of three, I want you to place your prayer request again into the atmosphere. One, two, and three. I want you to say it again. Praise God. Now as a church, our corporate prayer focus for the month is hope. How many of you got hope this morning? Yes. Oh, Jesus is my hope. Oh, I thank God for being my hope. He's my hope for the day. He's my hope for tomorrow. Yes. I thank God, amen, that he has given me something so I, I can lean on. Hallelujah. A pastor was saying this morning that he's my rock. He's my salvation. He's my defense. And Father, we come to you this morning knowing, Father God, that you are the God who you said you were in your word. Oh God, there's no doubt in our minds that you are the God of Abraham, even the God of Isaac and Jacob. And you are the same God that existed from all foundations of the earth. Oh, we thank you this morning that we have you as our Father, the one who make ways for us when we see no way, the one that provides and make ways, God, that we cannot understand. We give you glory this morning. Oh, Lord, we thank you this morning. Oh, uh, we have so much to thank you for. Hallelujah. We thank you for bringing us to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, the place where we gather together and celebrate you this morning. Oh, Lord, we thank you this morning because you gave your only begotten son. Oh, uh, Lord, to die at Calvary, uh, that we might have a right to the tree of life. Uh, oh, Lord, we thank you this morning uh, for the Holy Ghost. Uh, we know that you are real this morning. Uh, you are not a figment of our imagination. Uh, but God, I thank you. Uh, I thank you this morning. Uh, I thank you, Father God. We praise you, Lord. We ask your blessing upon this congregation, upon our pastor as he get ready to come forth. Father, just have your way. Walk up and down the aisle between every seat. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we'll give you the glory for whatever happens. In Jesus' name, all of you give the Lord a plan of praise as our pastor come this morning. Praise the and to those of you who are in the social media sanctuary online, we are thankful for God that you are with us. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. And it reads, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We're continuing our series and why don't you say it with me to the person next to you or behind you say these words don't ask me to move. Amen. Don't ask me. You may be seated. Don't ask me. We've all heard the old adage. Anything worth doing is worth doing well. We've also heard that the characteristics of a person that does things well, they are described as having a good work ethic. Now, obviously, everyone does not have a good work ethic. However, everybody does have the ability to perform work well. Some type, some, some, some type of work. And in our text this morning, I believe that this is what Paul is saying to us. First, he's saying, do the work and do the work that you've been assigned to do well. And then secondly, he says, exceed 
or go over and beyond that which is expected of you when you are working. And then thirdly, he says, and when you work, you should produce plentiful work. Now, I think it might be helpful if I stop for a minute to ensure that everyone understands and that everyone is clear on what the work is before we look at what it means to be always abounding. The last time I checked, we are called uh, to two specific areas of work, and that is evangelism and benevolence. Somebody say amen. That's a Baptist thing right there where the preacher asked y'all to join in with the sermon and say amen, because I already knew when I said evangelism and benevolence, it was going to get quiet. I already knew it. I already, I already knew that because I'm not going to ask you the question. I'm just going to put it in the atmosphere. Who's the last person that you shared the, blood, the, the, the good news of Jesus Christ with? Okay, it got quiet. I got one all right. But that, that's what we're called to do. We're called to evangelize and we're called to benevolence, right? That, that is to show love in, in, in such a way to when people see the love that we demonstrate, they want to get to know the Jesus that we're talking about. We're called to do good unto all men. Paul says in Galatians 6 and 10, especially to them who are of the household of faith. And then he also says this about the work. He says uh, that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That means that there has been something deposited in us, not just for us, but it has been placed in us for us to give to others. We have, we have this treasure, this good news of the gospel to share with the lost world. Now, 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 now here's what I want you to understand and, and just labor with me for a minute. I'm going to get to my text, always abounding, is what I want to talk about this morning. Our study and our worship while we're here today is to equip us for the work. Okay, let me say that one more time. The study that you do of the Word, y'all do study the Word, right? All right, so Wednesday morning at 6 o'clock in the morning, if I ask you about Psalm 62, everybody on there will be able to share with me about Psalm 62 because we're studying the Word and we're studying together. Is that, is that right? All right, all right, all right. And then our worship, the reason why we come here this morning, we call it worship, don't we? Right. The reason why we come here this, this morning, our study and our worship is to equip us for work. That is the work in which God has given us. So then, therefore, we enter into this place to worship, but when we leave here, we leave here to go to work. Tell somebody I'm going to work. Don't, don't say that. Let, don't say that unless you're really going to work. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. A, a, a work in which Paul says to us, be steadfast, that is, by now you ought to be seated, settled, and firmly situated in the work because you've been doing the work so often that the work has become familiar to you. And not only that, he says, now also be unmovable in the work. That is, be set, stable, and stationary. And it is not until we possess do these two characteristics, then, then we can move on to what he says next in the text, and that is to always abound in the work of the Lord. Now, here's what I want you to know. It's not our work, it's his work. God's work in us, rather 
our, than our own work. So now let's take a look at what Paul was saying here when he says always abounding. First of all, let's look at always. Always means that as Christians, we should be found consistently. We should be found continuously, and we should be found constantly working. In other words, we don't get to retire from the work. Let me say that one more time. You don't get a vacation from this work, and at the end of 20, 30 years, you do not get to sit down and retire. The issue that most of us have is we want to retire and receive a reward when we retire for service time and not for service rendered. Let me labor that for a minute because there, there's a difference. We want to retire and receive a reward for showing up for work and not for serving others. Okay, let me talk to you in Laban's terms so you really understand it. Many of us go to work physically every day and we show up and we really don't do the work that we're getting paid to do. We just do enough to get by. Okay, don't mess with me. Don't, 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 don't mess with me. Y'all know I led people for many years and lots of them. And most of them that was on the payroll showed up to get a paycheck. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, y'all not with me. Y'all not with me. Let me say it one more time. We want to retire, and when we retire, we want to receive a reward for showing up and give, giving our service, for showing up and giving our time. Okay, that's called in the real world SSI. Okay, for those of you who have gotten there already, don't worry, I'm on my way. Save me some of that income for when I get there, right? But baby, that's not how it works with God. We are called to do a work, and we must continuously work, and it doesn't matter how long you've been working, you do not get to stop based on your age. The reason why we as Christians must be Consistent. The reason why we as Christians must be constant. The reason why we must be continuous in the work is because the work that we are called to do, get this now, uh, it's regular work, it's repeated work, and it's routine work. So in other words, it's the same work over and over and over again. Isn't that good news? See, see, most of us don't like change anyway. So when they change stuff on, come on, don't mess with me. When they change stuff up on us on the job, then we get upset and we say, well, that ain't the way we, we no, that's not the way we used to do it, but this is the way we're going to do it now. Well, here's the good news. The work that God called us to does not change. The problem is, see, when we're doing physical work, we don't like change, but when we call to do the work of God, then we want to change. Don't y'all mess with me. I've been around a long time, right? And I, I understand people in employment and, and, and working, right? I, I would have to do this to people when, when I would tell them, hey, wait a minute, I need you to shift and I need you to do this for me. And remember, these were highly paid, highly educated folks as well that were getting big salaries. You would think with those big salaries, they just do their job because they was making so much money. But then they want to push back like, whoa, wait a minute, that wasn't what I was hired to do. But they they forgot when they didn't have a job, they was excited about getting a job. So every now and then, I would do them like this. I would say, come here, follow me. Let's walk outside the building. You see that name on the building? Not your name. Until your name gets on the building, then you can determine what it is you're going to do. Baby, until your name gets on the bike. Okay, okay, all right, all right. And on there. Uh, I know, I know y'all don't want to work. Uh-uh, y'all don't want to work. Uh, no, nah, I, I, I don't mean the middle. I just want to help you get better. Right. I just want to help you if you're slacking on the job, letting you know payday is coming. 
Yeah, and see, the problem is because you've been getting the same paycheck that everybody been getting, and you've been slacking on the job, you think that that's going to work the same way with God. Please, I'm not talking about your salvation, but I am talking about your reward. Whew, there is a difference. There's a difference. You ain't going to lose your salvation, but you ain't going to get the same reward. Baby, I want to be found working when he comes back so that I can get the reward that he has for me. No, no, no about y'all, but I like getting paid. I like being a pastor more than that. I'll do this for you. I know you, ain't found, you haven't found that passion yet. But that's my path, not because I'm a pastor, because I met the Jesus of the Bible. And when I met the Jesus of the Bible for real, he changed my thinking. He changed my actions. And now that's all I want to do is tell folk about the good news. I'm not a fanatic or anything else, and I want to live life in such a way that people see the Jesus in me. So when I walk in, I don't have to say nothing. They can just say, it's something peculiar about him. I see it. The work is regular, same old work every day. It's repeated, and it's routine. Interesting, you don't get bored on the job when the work is the same every day, but you get bored when it becomes the work that he called you to do. <laughs> don't mess with me. Here's, here's the work. Here's, here's the work. To make disciples, to make disciples. That, 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 that's the work. All right? The work has not changed, and the work will not change and you do not get a different job description than I do. And then don't you think that my position as pastor is elevated above yours because it's not. We're all servants. I just may be servant leader, but my job is to serve you, to equip you to do the work. Isn't that the word? Right. Your job not to serve me. My job is to serve you. But we all have a work to do, and the work is the same work. Tell somebody the work ain't change. It's perpetual work. Ceasing work. I know you didn't tell the truth when you said, I've been running for Jesus. I'm not tired yet. Now some of us got tired. Some of us have gotten winded. Some of us dropped out the race, and we sitting on the sidelines spectating, watching other folk run the race. But guess what? If all of us drop out the race, then won't nobody get, well, that's not a true statement, because he'll piece, keep, put some more folk in the race to make sure that they share the good news of Jesus Christ, so people will get saved. You just be, won't be the one that's sharing the good news, so they can get saved. Tell somebody, sometimes, baby, you do get fired. All right. See, y'all don't want me to be real. Y'all, y'all want me to play with you on Sunday morning, baby. I, I had no problem terminating people's employment, none. And guess what? I found out God does not have problems terminating folk employment as well. It's a shame that some folk been fired and they don't even know it. They still showing up. Don't play. They, 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 they still, right, right, in the real world, we were called, they got, they, they, something wrong with them, and they still showing up. We already told them they don't work here no more, and then they still showing up like they working here. Baby, do, don't, don't you think that God will not replace you with somebody else that will do the work that he's called you to do? Now, here's what I know. It's a lot of churches, okay, at least a couple churches, on the way down the street till you get to this church, right? As long as I'm the pastor of this church, he is not going to replace New Direction with another church because we're going to be found doing the work that he's called us to do. He ain't going to call me to do a work and then replace me because I'm not doing the work. Now, maybe you like that, but I don't like that. I like working. I like being employed. All right? That's why I get up every morning. All right? That's why I'm here every day. If I'm not here, normally I'm at a doctor's appointment. I found that. But Paul, I, I, Paul, I ain't realized that. Man, the older you get, the more doctor's appointments you have. Okay, I'm, I digress, but I'm coming back. Seems like I spend more time here and at the doctor's appointment. But anyway, because why? Well, I like working, and I like the work that I'm called to do. And the work that I'm called to do does not change, and I like the fact that it does not change, because when it does not change, then I have an opportunity to become proficient at that work. That means you get a chance to get good at it. 
where is he going? I don't know, but where he leads me out. It's a perpetual work. Isn't it interesting? When you look at it, we, we never see Jesus not working. Isn't, isn't that interesting? We never see him not working. I wonder why. I, I, want, I, I know some of y'all smart folk just said, yeah, he was. He was in the hinder part of the boat sleep, and they had to go wake him up. He was at work even while he was sleeping. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. I read the Bible for real. I ain't just read it. I've been studying and become a student of it. I wonder why. He, he, he must... Yeah, he, he did. But he also knew the same thing that he told us. I must work the work. Oh, see, y'all know it. Right? See, we, that's pro we, we have no problem with knowing the Bible. We just have a problem doing what the Bible says do. Ah, I got it. I must work the work of him who sent me. I got to punch that time cord. Every time I punch that, okay, they don't got it. They got the apps on the phone now where you can punch in. There's modern stuff in the machine. You just punch in on your phone. I got to punch in, and once I punch in, I do not get a chance to punch out. All right. Once I'm in, I'm in for life. I must work the work of him who sent me while it is day. It's always day, baby, because nighttime coming. Don't play with me because you work graveyard. I'm not talking about that. Nighttime coming when no M-A-N can work. I truly believe that Paul meant it when he said for us to keep working, for us to engage in the work of the Lord and for us to abound in the work of of the Lord. Why do you say engage, Chris? Why, why, why did you choose that word, engage? Because you cannot abound in the work if you have first not been Say that, do that one more time. Do that with my sister-in-law saying, if you have first not been engaged in it. I know you're still waiting on me to tell you what a bound means. Y'all should have Googled that by now. Yeah, you should have. I'm coming, though. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Let me say it one more time. You cannot abound in it until you first get engaged in it. Now, I believe there's three ways that we become engaged in the work. Some of us enroll, right? We, we, we go and we enroll in the work, much like we enroll in a higher education system. Others of us enlist in the work. Just, just like we do with military services. We decide, well, things ain't going for me well, so I guess I better go in the military. Don't play with me. Yeah, and then that's what we say to our children, too, when they not do, well, maybe you need to go in the military. So if, I, if they didn't enroll in college, right, then you go, okay, I'm going to enlist. And then others of us become actively employed in the work. But either way, whether you enrolled, enlisted, or been employed, We'll all call to do one thing, W-O-R-K. And please note, 
all of us have been given the commission to work. Come on, you know the commission. Why don't, why don't you say it with me? Y'all got it memorized. The commission says, go ye, come on, y'all know it. Don't leave me hanging. Go ye what? And teach y'all what? Baptizing them in the name of the what? See, if you don't know the word, you, at least you got that part right. I know it's got to be in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to do what? Observe what? All things. He cheating. He got his Bible open, but that's all right. If you don't know it, just pull out the app. All right, that's okay. That's okay. You ain't got to memorize it because I know a whole bunch of folk got the word memorized, and they do nothing with the memorization of the word. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, here's what I like, Michelle, miss this, and lo, I will be with you, highlight, underscore this word, always, even unto the end of the world. Baby, the reason why he is with us always is because the work that we have to do, we have to do it always. I never want to do the work without him. Uh, you know how it is when you go to work, right, and the supervisor leave you to do the work and you think you know what it is that you're supposed to be doing and how you're doing because you've been doing it on perpetually on routine on a regular basis and then something go wrong and when something go wrong then you try to improvise and when you improvise you mess stuff up. <clears throat> See, that's how it goes with us, <laughs> right? We'll improvise on him and then we'll mess some stuff up. But if we are with him following the command and the commission that he has given us, then he said, I am all always with you. And you will never make a mistake in the work that I've called you to do as long as you do the work in me, through me, for me. My last time asking you to bother them. Tell them, stop, stop. You can't stop working. Can't stop working. You can't. You can't. I see you. I know you're tired. I hear you. I know you're winded. I hear you, but you can't stop. Now that we've engaged and that we are walking, working, then Paul uses this word. He says, you must also abound. Y'all did look that up while I was preaching, right? Okay, see, now I got to keep going because I thought I was going to be able to stop and cut the sermon short because you already knew what abound means. Greek word, periseo, which means to exceed the requirement by overdoing, abound, which means that we should, when we work for him, go over and above. Now, I want to help some of y'all who struggle with me. All right, because some of y'all struggle, Alexis. All right, the reason why I only want to operate in the spirit of excellence is because when I was working on that job, I gave them folk my best. I did. Some of y'all, some of y'all did too. I, I, I have service awards to approve it. Uh, to prove it. Not, not only that. I had great stock options to go along with it to show, right? And they would do things like breakthrough award. I remember when I got the breakthrough award. Boy, I felt so good like I had did, really did some breakthrough award. All right. Oh, but, 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 but when it, when it, when it comes to us, when, when it comes to us, we, we, we are challenged in ministry because uh, we are people who like to do just enough, yeah, thank you for thank you for being honest. God gonna bless you. He gonna bless you. He gonna help you with that. That's how we we we. I'm comfortable with doing just enough. I'm comfortable with attending worship on Sunday morning. I bless God for those of you who press your way out here through the rain. 
<laughs> for those who didn't make their way through the rain, I love online, and I'm glad we got online, but the online just went down unless they got it back up. <laughs> I guess the rain knocked it out. I don't know. <laughs> right? But they missing it. I, I'm probably not saying anything that they want to hear anyway. But, 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 uh, but, 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 uh, you know, I, I get it. Uh, coming, coming to worship uh, and, and, and being here online or, uh, or coming to Bible study on Wednesday and uh, singing in the praise team. Y'all give it up. The praise team, they do an awesome job, right? I mean, I, I love that. I, I, I love that because they, they make it easy for me when it's time to get up and preach, all right? But, but, but can I be real with y'all? That ain't always abounding in the work. You coming to worship and you coming to Bible study and you singing in the praise team ain't always abounding in the work. I did not say it was not work. I did not say that. It is work. All right. It's church work. And there is a difference between church work and the work of the church. Ah. Uh, what Paul is talking about here in, in our text is... The work of the church, the work that Jesus instructed us to do after we was to pick up our cross and follow him. Did you think he just wanted us to walk around with a cross all the time? Yeah. He said, deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow me daily. And then he says, as you're following me, I am going to teach you something. I am going to give you an I am going to make you employable by giving you skills that you could use to go to work for me. Don't you just hate when you go on a job and they tell you all that good stuff and all the training they're going to do for you, and then they don't give you any training, and they stick you in there and just tell you, go to work? <laughs> Yeah, don't y'all just hate that? Y'all can't do it. I mean, I've been guilty of that. You know, after all, I'm going, wait a minute, you've been through six years of pharmacy school. You know, you should do, be able to count the pills and put them in the bottle. Uh, surely I don't have to train you to do that. Okay, all right, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, I'm just kidding. They were trained. All right. Jesus said, no, nah, I'm not going to do you like that. Come follow me. He gave us the example. Hit them 12 boys. They followed him, and he taught them. Isn't it interesting that they had some attributes that they brought to the table? Don't you let the enemy tell you you don't bring nothing to the table. Right. He called some folks that were experienced at fishing, but yet taught them how to fish. Okay. All right. All right. That's, that's, that's interesting within itself, right? They, they were experienced at fishing, but yet he had to teach them how to fish. I'm trying to help the folk who think you're above where the work is. No, baby, just because you have some knowledge of it does not mean that you have all knowledge. And there is something that you still need to learn. But the only way you're going to learn it is if you walk with him before you go to work for him. See, the problem with the pulpit today, I ain't talking about y'all, I'm talking about the pulpit today. The problem with the pulpit today is that they haven't walked with him, but they want to go to work for him. Don't play with me. I can tell when they ain't walk with him. I can tell it when they start preaching. I'm not judging, but I go, wait a minute, you ain't spend no time walking with him. Because if you spend some time walking with him, then when you open up your mouth, your mouth will be about the work that he called you to do. Jesus told those disciples, just like he told you and I, and I'm going to make you fishers of men. Now, y'all know me, New Direction. Y'all know I, I really do love fishing. Yeah, I do. And uh, two folk I'm going to revoke their membership card. I want y'all to know. It's two people. Y'all tell them I said it publicly, too. All right? Because I, I, I done told one already. I'm going to tell the other one when he get back. All right? I'm, I'm going to revoke their membership card because one of them went fishing last Sunday and sent pictures back while church was going on of all the fish they caught. And I don't have no problem with that. I do not have no problem with that. The problem is, Shamal, I ain't have to preach last Sunday, and they should have invited me so I could have been there with them. 
That's the problem I had. I'm just being real with you. It's like Shabal had to preach, man. It's like, peace out. I'm gone. I'd have been right there with it. Right. And the other one that just went on a, a fishing excursion, they, they hopping from state to state. Any other time, they'd be hollering, Pastor, you want to go fishing with us? We going night fishing. Man, no, I can't stay up past the news. They want me to go, we going night fishing, Pastor. Don't, don't worry. Just bring your, even if you don't bring your pole, just come on. We got you, Pastor. But they packed up, and they did not take me, and they jumping four states fishing. I hope, I hope they catch a lot of fish, too, because I'm going to get some when they come back. I know y'all thought I, y'all thought I was going to say I hope they didn't catch that. No, I want them to catch some fish. Contrary to what you believe, but fishing is not recreation. Fishing is work. It is. And on some days, some weeks, some months, you may work hard, and at the end of your fishing expedition, you may not see the reward of your labor. You may not. You 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 may not. Can can I can I can I press my point? And I promise I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close. I'm I'm gonna close. I'm not gonna hold y'all. Come 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 here. Come here, Simon Peter, and, and tell us about working and not getting a reward at the end of the day, but you didn't lose sight that there's a reward at the end of the work. <sighs> Uh, the, 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 the Bible says that that, that there was a crowd of folk uh, that were pressing upon Jesus while he was preaching. He was on the lake of Nazareth. You know, that's the lake that he crossed over when he got to the other side. He met the Gadarene demonic. Yeah, and so, so, so Jesus looked out and he said, ooh, a boat. <laughs> Matter of fact, it's two of them. They empty and unoccupied. So Jesus got into one of the two boats. I wonder what process he went through of elimination to decide what boat to get in. All right. But the Bible says he got into Simon's boat. I don't know about you, but I want to make sure he's in my boat. Tell somebody, I want him in my boat. I want him in my boat. I want him in my boat. Uh, so, so he gets in the boat, uh, and uh, he while while he before he gets in the boat, he Shemal, he looks and he sees that the fishermen have left out of the boat, and they were washing their nets. That means that the fishing trip was over, but yet they were cleaning their nets, preparing for the next trip to go out. Uh, and so. After he gets into Simon Peter's boat, uh, Simon gets in the boat as well, and Jesus tells him something. He says, let's, let's just take the boat out for a little ride, J just a little ways. We, we ain't going far. Just, just take it out a little ways. So, so Simon, I could do that. We can take the boat out just for a little way. Right, that, that's, that's, that's what we do when we get saved, right? You say, I, I'm going to accept him as Lord and Savior of my life. It ain't going to cost me much, you know. It's just, and once I'm saved, it's good because I've seen all them other folk get saved and they're not working, so I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, that, that was a drive-by right there. All right, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, all right. And then they get out there, and Jesus says the same thing to Simon that he says to you and I. He said, Man, let's take the boat out a little bit further. <laughs> that means you're going to have to open that thing up to get out there. Right? right. We're, going, we're going a little bit further in the boat. Uh, and uh, when we get out there, here's what I want you to do, uh, Simon. I want you to drop your net. Now... He did, like most of us. No, all of us do. <laughs> he says, well, hold up. Man, you must be crazy. <laughs> Don't you know? I just came back from fishing. Matter of fact, I know you know I just came back from fishing because you saw me washing the nets on the bank. And you want me to now go back out into the deep and drop them clean back 
back into their dirty war. Jesus said, yep, that's what I want you to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, what I want you to do. Uh, but, 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 Simon Peter, uh, this time, uh, we're going to do something different. But, but, Simon now makes up his mind, like I'm hoping that many of you will make up your mind today and get to the state of nevertheless. After Jesus tells him, he say, Nevertheless, Lord, at your word, I'm going. Anybody got a nevertheless spirit? Don't raise your hand and perjure yourself, but if you're really serious about the word, nevertheless, Lord, at your, at your word, at your word, because you said it, I'm going to do what you told me to do. All right, so he gets out there, and when he gets out there, then the Lord does something, and I don't want to miss it, because many times, we miss the voice of the Lord, or if we hear the voice of the Lord, we miss the instructions of the Lord. He tells him, Simon Peter, drop your net on this side of the boat. Woo, wait a minute. See, the problem is you cast your net, but your net is cast in the right water, but in the wrong direction. Okay, let me press my point. If you've ever been fishing and you fished on the pier, isn't it interesting you can be standing to the person right next to you and they can pull fish out, Ella, and you standing right there and you don't pull none out and y'all in the same water? That's because my brother would say you ain't holding your mouth right, but I would say, no, you ain't got your bait in the right hole. Yeah, he tells him now, now to drop his net and he obeys and drops the net. And look at what happened once he drops the net. He finds out when he goes to retrieve the net that there are a lot of fish in the net. There were so many fish in the net that when the net started to break. Now, here's what selfish folk would do. Selfish folk would still try to pull in all the fish. But unselfish folk who know that they're working for the Lord will share in the work because they know I can't minister to everybody and that new direction ain't the church for everybody. Just get saved and we'll get you in the right church. That they been begin to call over. There were some other little boats that were out there with them and call them over and they all shared in the reward of the work. I don't know about you, but here is what I know, Pastor Hart. Serving the Lord will pay off after a while. Let me say that one more time. Let me say that one more time. You're trying to push me there. You're trying to push me there. Since you're trying to push me there, take me there and E flat. Serving the Lord will pay off after a while. Just keep on working every day and whatever is right he will pay because serving the Lord will pay off after a while and I don't know about you but I'm looking forward to payday and when payday comes I want to receive my reward and the reward is that I will get to spend every day in eternity with Jesus and I don't know about you but oh I want to see him I want to look up on his face there to sing forever of his saving grace all the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all past home and life ever you, you may you may you may be you may be watching online you may be sitting in the sanctuary and and, and, and you've heard the word of God and you've now made up your mind that you're ready to go to work. 
Here's where the work begins. You either got to enroll, enlist, or be employed. And it begins with you making the decision. Either one of those, you got to make a decision. And the decision you must first make is to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. It's not good enough to just know. It's not good enough just to know what I'm going to share with you right now. And, and, and that's the word of God that says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Here's what I want you to know. Satan knows that. All right. Knowing is information. All right. But a believing in acceptance is salvation, and there's a difference between information and salvation. So that, that's, what, that's what I'm extending to you now. That's the invitation. If you're not saved, if you're saved, that's good. I'm glad. I'm happy because we're all a part of the kingdom. That's, that's the invitation. But here's my second invitation because saved folk are called to do exactly what I just preached about, work. Right? They're called to do a work. So maybe you're saved and you're not doing the work, but today... The word has convicted you to where you say, well, Pastor, I'm ready to go to work. I'm ready to go to work. Here's my third invitation. And my third invitation is that you're saved, you're working, but you do not have a place, a church that you can call home, a place that you can get into fellowship with other believers and continue to learn and continue to work. I want to offer New Direction as that place. And if New Direction is not the right place, we'll help you find a place. But I think New Direction is a great place to get in the fellowship. It is. It's not perfect, but it's a great place. I hear they coming. They coming. He doing just what he, come on, come on, come on, come on.
you going to do, y'all? Right. I read it in Acts chapter 2. He said, they continue in the apostle doctrine and breaking bread from house to house. And by them doing that, then he said this happened. And he added to the church daily. He's done that just again. Sister Tori Fletcher is coming not only to be a member, but as a candidate for baptism as well. Come on, y'all. Give it up for God. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Michelle, in the Baptist church, they would say, take me to the water. I'm not going there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, in addition to that, will, will y'all just give me a few minutes and let Brother Roy just share his testimony? Are y'all okay with that? Yes. Okay. All right. We, we don't do that no more. We don't have testimony service no more. Y'all, y'all remember? We used to go to church at nighttime, right? They would sing a song, all right? And then they would tell a testimony. Yes, Songs like, Trouble in My Way. church anniversary, you know, Minister Tolliver spoke to me, you know, about that, don't waver, don't lose faith, because if he did it before, he'll do it again. And I just want to just let y'all know to thank God that I got a call. coded on the table. And he just took my mom saying, Jesus, I need you in here. Yeah. It was God's prayer in my soul. Yeah. And I just want y'all to know that he stand on his promise that he gonna make me whole again. Yeah. And I'll just continue to, to be able to serve him faithfully. Yeah. And to be able to show people love like he showed me love. Yeah. And that's just all he put me on earth to do is just show love. 
Then I just thank God for y'all prayers. I just thank God for y'all continue, you know, just continue just to uplift me. And, 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 and just, I just, just thank God. I just thank God for just letting me allow to stay on this earth for a little longer. And just to see his glory fulfilled. And one day he's going to share his glory through me. And y'all just continue to just pray. Hallelujah. Because the devil is a lie. As soon as they told me that, my blood was critically low. And I had to go in the hospital to treat to get a blood transfusion. And I'm just here today on Sunday morning just, just to stand and just let y'all know that God is faithful. Yes, he is. And he is just. Yes. And just continue to just keep it in y'all heart. And just do it. And, and just follow him because he is real. Thank you, Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Those of you who can, come show them some love. Those of you who can and who want to, come show them some love. Just come show them some love. Tori and, and Brother Rod. Tori and Brother Rod. a true prophet because the prophecy comes to pass. Amen. Brother Rod and I got a chance to shout early in the week. He ain't tell y'all he had to come off the job and go outside because the news is when you know we're gone. And, and I hear you because Brother Rod ever since that Sunday, every week what he has prophesied to me, something has happened. Amen. And to see that happen in the lives of others as well, I thank God for sending the true man of God to speak to us. Now, here's what I want you to know. If he'll do it for Rod and he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you too. Yeah. I'm telling you, he will. I know he will. Come on, sister. Hope she's got one announcement. Good morning. Just one quick announcement. Men, it's your turn today. Rehearsal right after uh, church today, immediately after church today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Listen, uh, this is our opportunity to give. Uh, if you would like to give, you can do so in person. You can raise your hand and get an envelope, or you can give electronically as well. They'll place some information up on the screen. Uh, you can give via PayPal or through Zelle by using our email address, newdirectionchurch01 at gmail.com. I encourage everyone, please, to sow a seed. As you're preparing your offering, I want to say thank you so much. I won't call names, but just so many of you showed up yesterday to make it possible for us to do the work in this community. Uh, I got here. Sister West was here working like she's always working. It was me and Sister West, Chandra. It was me and Sister Wes. And that room was full of pallets and full of food. And I didn't know how we was going to get it out. Sister Wes started calling her son, and he was at work. I'm going to call one name. I call Luther. 
Luther got her here, and he was concerned with me trying to help him move them big old pallets and get them out. He was. He was getting out. He trying to do them by himself. All right. But the Lord knew. He knew. I say, Luke, the way your truck is. He say, man, I got my truck loaded. I was going to work, but I knew you called and you needed some help, so I came. You can't call everybody because ain't everybody coming to your rescue. And now I'm like, well, what are we going to do? I got all this food, and I got to get some moved around, and we don't have nothing but one vehicle, my vehicle to move. And <sighs> See, I stopped trusting God. But let me tell you what happened. They started rolling up, they as y'all members, with SUVs and trucks that I didn't even know exist in the congregation. I didn't even have to ask. They just pulled up with them and started loading their vehicles and moving the food to the other two distribution sites in which we needed to distribute the food. And, and let me get you to the end of the story. On yesterday was the biggest day of giving away food that we have ever had since we've been partnering. It's a, a more, we had more than enough, and we helped so many families. Thank you to all of you who came and made it possible. We couldn't have did it without you. All right. I promise, Alexis, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust him. If, if, if y'all don't show up, here's what I know. He's got folk who going to show up, who going to make it happen. Right? A whole Eastern Star chapter showed up yesterday to make it happen. They did. And they served. And then they saw something because at the end they said, Pastor Chris, can we come back and just worship with y'all one Sunday? Okay. All right. Thank you for understanding the vision and the mission of this ministry and work it, working to carry it out. Denitra can testify. I watched a young lady stop, and she wasn't the only person, Denitra, and she said, I just want to thank you. I'm paraphrasing for what you guys are doing in this community. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. She, she, did, and did she tell you that, Denitra? That should give you joy. I didn't say happiness, joy right there, knowing that we're meeting needs. And God takes and he makes what we give to be more than enough. All right, now here's the overflow. I want y'all to know here's the overflow. There's some stuff left over that I need y'all to go next door and load up and take home with you. Because it's overflow. And I trust God that next month he gonna give me more than what he gonna give me this month. How, how, you, how you know that, Chris? Because this week I opened up the email, and at the bottom of the email was the third signature from Utah approving almost $16,000 worth of refrigeration that I need to put the food in. He wouldn't give me the refrigeration if he wasn't going to give me the food. Another religious organization, not even of our same faith, though, and they're paying for it because they see the work. All right, just keep on working. Thank you guys so much for your support. Now, go next door. Hurry up and get next door. There's bananas left. There's vegetable boxes left. There are meats in the freezer. And then for those of you who like poke bones, that's what they call them, right? Not pork, but poke bones. I got three cases of poke bones. All right, I need y'all to take all of those pork bones home with y'all, all right? All of them, and there's some other things as well. So uh, make it to the house, see Sister West, she's over there. And please, please, please uh, see Sister Holtz as well. She needs to record that so that we can uh, get, keep record of what, what, how we're distributing the food so that we can get more. Will y'all do that for me? Because if y'all don't take it, then I'm gonna have to, uh, like the bananas are not gonna hold, and I'm gonna end up giving them, a, uh, throwing them out and stuff like that. So y'all do that, please, and enjoy the overflow. All right, thank you so much. Look this way, look this way. I pray that the peace, power, and the protection of God be upon your life. I pray that the provisions of God be more than enough to meet your every need. And I pray 
that as you leave this place, that the presence of God always be with you. In Jesus' name, amen.